Rut Row Scoobert, the shaggy hair is gone. After months of growing my hair out since January, I finally did the thing that I thought I'd never have to do. I got a haircut. And I feel great. I, ca I can actually breathe in this terrible Texas summer heat. And you know, normally I should be feeling ecstatic. I should be absolutely elated. But I'm not. Because there's one thing that's just been leaving a really, really terrible taste in my mouth. And that is... The Borderlands movie. Because we have once again been plagued with another adaptation of a game to TV show or movie, and this one went just as bad as you'd expect. And it's just another chapter in the very, very long book of bad adaptations of video games. But this one is just especially really, really bad. I cannot emphasize just how bad they dropped this ball. This thing dropped, it is still dropping to the center of the earth. Upon its initial release, it got a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. 0%. That is insanely impressive, considering that Rotten Tomatoes isn't even that good of a, you know, source anymore, because you've got those, you know, those critics and their critic ratings. But this one had a zero upon opening. I don't know what it is now. Hold on, actually. 9%. As of recording this, it has a 9% Rotten Tomato. That is incredibly impressive. Wait, hold on. Oh, I'm so disappointed in the audience. This is the first time that the critics were actually correct, I guess. But regardless, that is a very, very justifiable rating of this movie, because it is abysmal. And of course, one of the main issues that this movie has is that it does not follow the original story and the lore of the game. I don't know why they continue to do this. These game, you know, movies by these really, really big companies, they always think that they can do it better. They see this very well-crafted story of this thing, you know, that they're adapting and then they just throw it away because they think that they can do it better and as usual it they didn't wasn't couldn't be and it's just not good and the worst part about this it's not even funny one of the charms of borderlands is that even though it has a pretty well crafted story one of the charms of it is that it had some humor behind it some people played borderlands they got a little bit of a ha ha a little bit of a chuckle while they continued to absolutely murder everybody around them and there was no such thing in borderlands there was no humor i did not laugh not even ironically not even at the terribleness of the movie there was no smiles that oh so familiar humor that everybody is you know who has played borderlands is just not present within this movie so the writing for this show is awful okay what else does it have you know usually when the writing's bad, that's that. It's kind of the bread and butter of any kind of movie, the writing. But, you know, if you're looking to give it any more benefit of the doubt, whether that be through, you know, visuals or, or whatever, well, I'm sorry, nothing is gonna be in your bowl. You are eating a bowl of nothingness. Because visually as well, this movie is straight dookie. Absolute stinker. And that's surprising, considering that this movie had like a hundred million dollar budget. Big number. Nine figures. And it ended up looking absolutely terrible. And for two big reasons. First of all, the choreography for this movie is not great. And this is a movie that you know, requires that it have good choreography. A lot of Borderlands is action. It is just an inherently action-based game. So if you're gonna make a movie about that and, and the combat and all that, it has to be, you know, the choreography has got to be good and it wasn't it was really bad that and the camera angle was like the, the moving all around it's like you know that joke that people have when people are like filming a fight and then they just like shake the camera all around and then they look back and the fight's over that's essentially what happened and even the environment just looked not good it's not something that you'd expect for a 2024 movie especially with the budget that big and borderlands has to do with you know it's it's sci-fi it is a sci-fi game so it's a sci-fi movie sci-fi demands a lot when it comes to visuals and in borderlands there are a lot of really impressive visuals the only thing that the movie got right was the robot known as claptrap but even then, that is not enough to, even though Claptrap's beloved and everybody loves Claptrap, it's still not enough, and this is really close to my face. In the end, it's not even an enjoyable bad like The Room or movies that people watch that are so terrible, but you know, it's an experience to go and watch them. It's not even that. There's no joy to be derived from watching this thing. 
In fact, you probably shouldn't, and people don't and to, to The only impressive thing about this movie is how this studio managed to convince so many A-list celebrities to be a part of it. I mean, you've got people like Jack Black, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Hart in this movie, Poorly cast, by the way, but, you know, breadcrumbs, don't even need to talk about it. But the fact that they were able to get these really big celebrities to be a part of this movie, read, uh, surely read the script and then think, yeah, I want to be a part of this. How they managed to do that is, I, I don't know. Surely they have some kind of dirt on them to make them be a part of this project. To put it plainly, the studio messed up and they are getting desperate. So desperate, in fact, that the CEO himself, yes, the big bucko, made a statement practically begging the audience to give the film a chance. And this is a new low in terms of video game adaptations. I've experienced people, you know, ignoring criticism of a movie or show, you know, laugh at the audience like, haha, you don't know any better. But I've never really seen somebody beg their audience or their targeted audience to watch the movie. That is an extremely low low. The statement goes a lot farther, but it's essentially talking about, you know, there are a lot of people who worked on this project, so, you know, it's it's fair that that you give it a chance. They're, pra they're practically guilt-tripping you to watch the movie. It's your fault for not seeing it, it's your fault for not liking it. Which is never, never worked in the history of ever. 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 This all boils down to very brass tacks. Does that make sense? I don't think it does, but I'm rolling with it. In truth, the situation is just really, really simple. You made a bad movie. A bad movie that people don't really want to see, and those that did see it didn't enjoy it. The weird thing for me especially, because I didn't even know that this movie existed until like a week ago, when I was like, I don't know, browsing through YouTube, watching whatever, and then I saw an ad pop up, and it was for the Borderlands movie. I didn't even know this thing existed. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if there was a lot of advertising and marketing for this movie. If that's just me, I apologize. But if it's not just me, then they did a really poor job when it comes to advertising this movie, which doesn't really help. It's probably why their viewership of this movie is so low. But frankly, I think that's just the least of their problems, considering that, you know, advertising aside, you still had this project that you absolutely flopped. It flopped. Is it really so difficult for these companies and studios to adapt a video game into a movie? There are some video games, mind you, and I've, I've thought about this a lot, there are a lot of video games that you really just can't adapt into like a TV show or a movie because it would probably probably be done wrong. Like, like for instance, I think about like Skyrim. Could you make a Skyrim movie or a Skyrim TV show? Probably not. It just doesn't really fit in that kind of setting. And there's other games like that as well. GTA, m maybe. But that's that's a very very thin maybe point i'm trying to make not every game can be put into a movie borderlands is one that could absolutely be made into a movie or a tv series and they tried and they failed because they didn't pay attention to the most important aspects of borderland and that is the story. If they had just followed with the story, they probably would have been fine, or at least used the source material in order to make a good movie or a good show. Fallout did, I think, the best out of any adaptation ever, and that's because they did something unique. They took the plot, they took the story of Fallout and tried to make something new, but they did it in a way that it didn't disrespect the lore of the show or the game. And sure, there are a couple exceptions with Fallout, that people have pointed out in the past, but even then it stands on its own two feet and it's a prime example of how to adapt a video game into a movie or a TV show. This one is just not it because yeah, they tried to go off on their own with their own story, but they didn't pay attention to really any of the lore with, with Borderlands. Another thing that I need to point out too with this movie is that the plot itself is just uninteresting. There are no obstacles for these characters to overcome, there's no big task for them to accomplish and, you know, trials and tribulation that they have to deal with. It's like a cakewalk, they're, they're, they're just going around, that's it. It's like a mini side quest, but for an entire movie, and not even a fun one. All in all, this Borderlands movie is just another shining example of how not to adapt a video game into a movie or a TV show. These studios never learn, they have still yet to learn on how to actually properly adapt, you know, video games. Will they in the future? I don't know. I don't know how many examples, you know, these studios need before they take a step back and realize, you know what? These games have lore, they have a story. 
we should probably use it. But but who knows? Who knows if that's ever going to change? We'll just have to wait and see. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If indeed you still are, my name is Broxter, and I bid you all adieu.